Right. <coughs> 2.15 from the Advanced Higher Maths Camp. Parametric equations. A longer question this time. Finding the tangent to the curve, second derivative as before, and the constraint equation. Now, the constraint equation is the equation that connects y and x directly, instead of each of them being expressed independently in terms of a parameter t. Tangent. Tangent's a straight line, straight line to the curve at a certain point. To get the equation of a line, I'll need a point on it and its gradient. Its gradient will be divided by dx, so I'll need to differentiate these first of all. I've got x equals 2 plus 1 upon t. So dx by dt would be, differentiate that respect to t, 2 is a constant, 0. Power negative 1, so it'll be minus 1, 1 off the power negative 2 y equals t squared plus 1 over t squared minus 1 divided by dx. That's a bit nasty, it's a quotient. We'll use the quotient rule. So that would be square the bottom. And then proceed as when the product rule, which is if you've got a product of terms needing differentiated, you sequence through them in order. Differentiate the first, leave the rest alone. Differentiate the second, leave the rest alone. Differentiate the third, and so on and so on. So differentiating the first would give me 2t times, leave the other one alone, t squared minus 1. Minus, because it's the quotient rule, and that's a negative power underneath. Uh, leave the first alone, t squared plus 1, and proceed to the next one. The derivative of that is 2t. Common factor, take it out. Take out the 2t, and that leaves me a t squared minus 1, minus a t squared, minus another one all over t squared minus 1, all squared. t's cancel out, t squared minus t squared goes, minus 2, so minus 4t over t squared minus 1 squared. And now we can start to get the derivative. So, dy by dx. Well, dy by dx would be dy by dt, because y is expressed in terms of t, multiplied by dt by dx, using the chain rule, because it's a function of a function. So that would be negative 4t over t squared minus 1 squared, multiplied by the reciprocal of dx by dt, 1 over, 1 over negative t squared. Sort this fraction out independently, multiply the top and the bottom, we'll just do it here, multiply the top and the bottom by t squared, shrink that out, so that means I'll have t squared on top, so that'll be t squared over 1, over negative 1, so I'll just make that times negative t squared. So altogether that would be negative times negative is positive, so that's 4t cubed over t squared minus 1, all squared. Right, so that was just for the derivative. Next part would be get the equation of the tangent. Right, be the space at the top. The result I need to remember so far is this little bit at the bottom here, this first derivative. I'll need that later on as well. <coughs> right, from this it says, the equation of the tangent at x equals 4. So, x equals 4. Well, the connection was x is 2 plus 1 upon t. So that means that... 2 plus 1 upon t equals 4. Now, there's two ways I could proceed there. I could multiply everything by t and get 2t plus 1 equals 4t. Or I could just rearrange the terms the way they are. Oh, choices, choices, decisions. I'll just leave that the way it is and make that equal 2. And then just take the reciprocal of the equation, so t equals a half. Now, once I know what t is, I can find what y is. y equals t squared... So that'll be a half squared plus 1 over t squared. That'll be a half squared minus 1. So that would be a quarter plus 1 over a quarter minus 1. To save some space, I think I'll just move across the way. Fractions within fractions. Multiply everything by 4. 1 plus 4 over 1 minus 4. So that would be 5 over negative 3, negative 5 upon 3 which means the point is going to be the point 4, negative 5 upon 3. Next, the gradient. Well, if x equals 4, the gradient's going to be, well, that was the expression for the gradient down here, so the gradient's going to be 4 times 
a half cubed over Oh, almost squared it before I could write squared. A half squared minus one squared. Maybe I'll put this across the way just to save some space. So I've got four times an eighth. Well, I'll just leave it like that. I don't know because I could just have made that down to a half. Four times an eighth over a half squared is a quarter, so it's negative three quarters. Negative three quarters. Well, I'll just put this at the side. I've got negative three quarters squared will be nine upon sixteen. I'll move that out of the way. Fractions within fractions. Multiply everything by 16 to get rid of all the denominators. So the bottom will just be 9. 16 times the top. 8 to 16, 2. 2 fourths are 8. Answer, 8 ninths. So, equation of the tangent. Well, tangent that's a straight line. So it'll just be the y minus b equals mx minus a. So I've got y minus the y coordinate, so y plus 5.3 equals m, which is 8 ninths of x minus the x coordinate, x minus 4. I need this space here. 9 does for all the fractions, so multiply them by 9. 9y nine plus 3 into 9 goes 3, 15, 8 x minus 32. And then you can arrange that into any order you like there. Maybe I'll just write in the order of, I'll just write it as 9y equals 8x minus 15 minus 47. So, just pause there to clear the board and put down the information needed to get the second derivative. So for the second derivative, I've got d squared y by dx squared would be. Now y is expressed like dy by dx in terms of t, so I can only differentiate that with respect to t, so it'll be d by dt of dy by dx times, as in the general, dt by dx, which will be the reciprocal of this other term. So this is a quotient, so it's going to be the quotient rule then. So it's a square at the bottom, t squared minus 1 That'll be the power 4 then, squaring that. Top part, same pattern, only with a subtract obviously, as the product rule. So taking them in turn, differentiate the first one, that'll be 12t squared. Leave the other one alone, t squared minus 1 squared, minus, leave the first one alone, and move on to the next one, 4t cubed times the derivative of this. Now that's a function of a function. So I have to do the outside first. So I've got 2 times t squared minus 1 to the power 1 times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of that being 2t multiplied by the reciprocal of this. 1 over negative 1 over t squared. Now there's common factors in here. That's the thing you have to start to learn to look for. So from the common factors you could possibly go a bit cross-eyed with all these twos and miss something out or get something wrong. So maybe I'll just take time to write this again. Picking out all these numbers. So I've got 2 times 2 is 4, times 4 is 16. I've got a t cubed and a t, that'll be t to the 4. And then finally I've got that bracket. And whilst I'm at it, having had to write that again, I'll tidy this bit up an independent multiplying fraction, separate from this part, so I can treat this bit on its own, sort this out, the fractions within fractions, multiply the top and the bottom by t squared, leave me a negative one underneath, so I'll just be negative t squared. Now, see so what we can tidy up, there's <coughs> quite a bit to choose from here. We've got a 12 and a 16, that'll give us a 4. I've got t squared, t to the 4, the best I can do is t squared. I've got some brackets the same, the most I can do is just to have one of them. So what does that leave? I've got the 4, so I need a 3, I've got all the t squared, I've got one of those brackets, so I'll need another 3t, and the other t squared minus 1, minus 4, I'll need a 4 to make the 16, I'll need a t squared to make the t to the 4, and I've got the bracket. And you can just sit and wait for a moment over t squared minus 1 to the power 4. So what have I got then? I've got 4t squared times t squared minus 1 times this part here. So what does this part here come to? I've got 3t squared, take away 4t squared. That's a negative t squared minus 3. 
over t squared minus 1 to the power 4 times negative t squared. Well, that negative could be used to reverse that. Well, not reverse that, to change those to positives. That t squared will make that in t to the 4. So I've got 4 t to the 4. Those two bits, well, not those two bits, that can cancel out one of those to make it a 3. So I've got 4 t to the 4. That negative will change those to positives times t squared plus 3 all over t squared minus 1 just to the power of 3 now because we had those common factors. Now, yeah, that's the second derivative. Next, it would be find the constraint equation. Right, pause there just to clear the board again to go on to the last part, part C, the constraint equation. And to get the constraint equation, I need to write y in terms of x if possible. Sometimes you may well end up with an implicit equation. Now, to get y in terms of x, I need to do a substitution. So I need to rearrange that one to read t equals. So for that one, I would have 1 upon t equals x minus 2. Reciprocal, t equals 1 over x minus 2. Substitute that into this one. So y is going to equal 1 over x minus 2 squared plus 1 over 1 over x minus 2 squared minus 1. Fractions within fractions. The one on top doesn't matter. The square of 1 is still 1. Multiply everything by x minus 2 squared. So that would just become 1 and that would become x minus 2 squared. That would just become 1 and that would again become x minus 2 squared. x minus 2 squared that would be x squared minus 4x plus 4. So the top's just going to be 1 plus x squared plus 4x plus 4. So the top's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 5. The bottom, that's going to be 1 minus. So all these terms are going to be subtracted. That's a bit nasty. The way around that would be take the negative out and reverse that bottom subtraction. So do x minus 1 squared minus 2 squared minus 1. So that would be x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 1, so plus 3. Now the top doesn't factorise, bottom does, but it's not actually worth doing that because it look unbalanced. That will do as the final answer. So the constraint equation is y equals this. <laughs>